<laughs> this video is about something weird. Something that neither feels right nor looks good. Fortunately, we already called the Ghostbusters. If it wasn't clear already, in this marvelous video, we will take a look at the latest installment of the Ghostbusters franchise, dubbed Ghostbusters, The Frozen Empire. The film introduced a particularly chilling addition to the Ghostbusters rogue gallery. This nefarious entity is known as Garaka, and in this video, we will explore everything about this menacing antagonist. But before we move on, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It might be a small click for you, but to us, it means an awful lot. Now with that out of the way, strap on your proton packs and pack up some woolens, because it's about to get cold in here. It's an unimaginable evil. It's the power to kill by fear itself. The Path to Garaka and the Frozen Empire Despite being one of the most beloved movies of all time, Ghostbusters hasn't had the best luck with sequels over the years. The original 1984 film was a roaring success on almost all avenues, leading to spin-offs, cartoons, and merchandising deals, acquiring all the marks of a successful franchise. Of course, the producers, Columbia Pictures, were more than happy to produce a second film. But as we all know, something went terribly wrong. The sequel went through an extremely turbulent production, with more reshoots than the average DCEU production, leading to a delayed release schedule. Upon release, it was extremely evident that the spark had gone missing, and audiences were quick to notice. The sequel bombed at the box office, and all plans for a trilogy were squashed. Though the show did see some success with animated spin-offs and video games, it wasn't until 2016 that we finally got a reboot. Alas, longtime fans who had grown up with the series did not take kindly to the gender-swapped version of their favorite characters, and the reboot garnered excessive bashing from fans online. For the following years, we thought that it would be at least another decade or so before our next bout with paranormal creatures. Fortunately, in 2021, the series went back to its roots and released Ghostbusters Afterlife. Now, most fans know that Ghostbusters Afterlife wasn't really the most original of stories, but what the film did do right was the nostalgia. It went back to the series' roots and paid homage to the iconic characters whose stories had been left midway due to production troubles. It is in this universe that Ghostbusters Frozen Empire takes place, and more importantly, this is where Garaka rears his ugly head. In Afterlife, we are introduced to the estranged family of Egon Spengler, including his daughter Callie, who inherits the deceased Ghostbusters farm. Over the course of the film, Phoebe and Trevor, grandchildren of Egon, have numerous supernatural encounters and end up forming the Ghostbusters along with their mother, Callie, and teacher, Gary Gruberson. It is this band of paranormal hunters that we find in the Frozen Empire. Set three years after Afterlife, Frozen Empire finds the titular team still busting ghosts in the Big Apple. However, this time around, they are faced with an all-new threat that has apparently persisted for centuries. Though the Ghostbusters franchise has seen numerous threats over the years, Garaka is unique due to the sheer terror he seems to inspire in people. Though many of the ghost designs in Ghostbusters are more funny than scary, Garaka doesn't seem like he understands the concept of humor. Many might assume that this monster has been brought to life using CGI. However, there's an actual actor under all those effects. No doubt, CGI has been used to augment the design of the Ice Breather, but the real magic here is created by the 7 foot 1 inch tall puppeteer, Ian White. The height was certainly a factor while casting White, as Garaka clearly towers over all the characters characters in the movie, but these are just technicalities. The real horror of Garaka lies in his lore, which spans centuries. Where does Garaka come from? The immense scope of Garaka's power becomes evident from the very first scene in the film. Police rush into a strange apartment, the occupants of which are all frozen. Moreover, the strange phenomenon seems to be arising from an ominous orb that seems to contain the monster. This orb is essentially Garaka's prison. The monster, though formidable, is clearly trapped inside this mysterious object. Therefore, to really understand Garaka, it's necessary to first understand how he got into the orb. Director Gil Keenan claimed in a recent interview that it was a dream come true to create an original mobster for a franchise as beloved as Ghostbusters. Keenan has also accepted that the roots of the character lie in the depths of history. Through his research at the British Museum's Hall of Antiquities, Keenan discovered that certain metals had special properties and could contain spirits, both good and evil. This is what inspired the mysterious orb, containing a malevolent spirit with a grudge against humanity. This artifact is then passed down through generations for safekeeping. In Frozen Empire, the orb is one such artifact that has been passed down through generations until it reaches a good-for-nothing descendant of an ancient band of heroes named Nadim. Nadim is played brilliantly by Kumail Nanjiani. 
Johnny. Hustling for money, the idiot would go on to pawn off the orb for a mere 50 bucks. No wonder Nadim's daddy never really liked him. When released from the orb, Garaka takes the form of a giant 12-foot-tall entity with horns sticking out of his skull. These horns are essentially the source of his power and had to be ripped away while locking the monster inside the orb. Through the course of the film, we begin to gain more insight into the strange and twisted tale of Garaka, especially in a pivotal scene at the New York Public Library. In this scene, Ray, Phoebe, and Podcast visit Dr. Hubert Wartsky, an expert in ancient languages and folktales. Dr. Wartsky instantaneously recognizes the script on the brass orb as a language so ancient that it predates both Sumerian and Sanskrit. The language had remained lost for many centuries until this very moment. Many eons ago, a human king summoned the demon Garaka to aid him in battle. The plan went as expected. The king's enemies were defeated, and his ego was satisfied. But there was one exception. Garaka had grown grown ambitious during his time on Earth, and the king became a bit unsettled by the possibility of his throne being usurped by a demon. Indeed, the demon god was well on his way to amassing an army of ghosts in order to control the earthly realm. Fortunately, the king was able to gather four fire masters to capture the terrifying demon. These sorcerers, with pyrokinetic abilities, were able to subdue the creature by exploiting his weakness for fire and brass. They broke the malevolent spirit and captured its remains into the metal orb. However, Garaka has a way of slipping past his bonds time and again. The most recent incident, which occurred in 1904, is depicted in the prologue of the movie. Back then, the Manhattan Adventurer's Society had accidentally unleashed a monster, and as expected, from an ice-breathing demon, he froze them to death. It is later revealed that it was Nadim's grandmother who had managed to tame the demon and recapture it within the orb. For more than a century, this dangerous object remained in the confines of Nadim's grandmother's house until Nadim sold it. This was the story of Garaka's origins. What comes next is the story of what Garaka did when he was ultimately freed during the events of the Frozen Empire. Garaka vs. the Ghostbusters, his role in the film. As mentioned before, Garaka's great threat is evident from the beginning of the film. However, at the beginning of the film, Ghostbusters are completely unaware of this tumultuous history. Even Ray, who had been a member of the original team, is baffled when Nadim Razmati first approaches him with the strange object that Ray's occult books. Nadim reveals a mystical orb with an unintelligible script scrawled all across it, an heirloom that he inherited from his grandmother. The moment Ray grabs it, it becomes evident that the orb has some paranormal properties. For instance, when Ray tests the object's PKE levels, the psychic charge unleashed is so great that it damages the Ghostbusters Firehouse's Ecto Containment Unit. Intrigued, the team tries to extract the spirit from the orb by using the resources owned by Winston's Paranormal Research Center. Despite using a machine that utilizes the genius Egon Spengler's ecto-containment technology, the Ghostbusters are unable to draw out the ghost residing inside the orb. Meanwhile, Phoebe Spengler has been going through problems in her family life. As the youngest yet smartest member of the Ghostbusters, Phoebe begins to feel overshadowed by the adults surrounding her. This leads the young girl to grow distant from her family, and she befriends a seemingly gentle spirit called Melody. The many mysteries surrounding the orb lead Trevor, Lucky, and Penfield to Nadim's apartment in Queens. Here, we learn that Nadim was completely unaware of anything supernatural, but he led the protagonist to a small hidden chamber in his grandmother's apartment. The entire place is covered with sheaths of brass, where the orb had been originally stored. In addition to this, they also find two giant horns dangling from the roof. This discovery piques the Ghostbusters' interest, and they subject them to parapsychological evaluation at the hands of everyone's favorite jerk, Peter Vinkman. Vinkman's unorthodox procedure, which includes flinging pins at Nadine, brings to light Nadim's latent pyrokinetic abilities. Though this does not raise many questions at the moment, it all begins to fit into place after the reveal of Garaka's origins and his capture at the hands of the Fire Masters. But unfortunately, this is a tad bit too late. After another fight with her family, Phoebe unsuspectingly leads Melody to the Paranormal Research Center. The duo breaks into the facility after Phoebe comes up with the idea of extracting her own spirit from her body to physically interact with Melody. However, this plan goes wrong in the worst ways possible. After we realize that Melody is nothing but a pawn in Garaka's clutches, she tells Phoebe that this was all a part of the deal she had made with Ice Demon in exchange for a safe passage to afterlife. Now, with her spirit removed from her body, Phoebe is vulnerable to Garaka's control, as she is literally a ghost herself. The demon manipulates Phoebe into releasing him from the object, and for a moment, it seems like this would be the end for our young savant. 
Fortunately, Lucky saves him, but both the girls get knocked out in the process. After the monster retrieves his horns, we get our first glimpse of Garaka's tremendous power. His mere appearance causes the sea to freeze over and seems to usher in a new Ice Age. The Ghostbusters are barely given any time to recover, as Garaka unleashes his full might on their firehouse. Fortunately, a few clever tricks help them save the day. Phoebe uses her understanding of Spengler's technology to reconfigure the weapon with brass, the only material Garaka is susceptible to. Even Nadine manages to master pyrokinesis and dons his grandmother's brass armor to join the Ghostbusters in battle. Despite these preparations, Garaka seems too powerful and is able to freeze most of the Ghostbusters with his icy breath. Fortunately, Melody comes to the side of the heroes after Garaka betrays her and lights the flame that would lead to the monster's defeat. Though the team isn't able to completely destroy the monster, they do succeed in banishing the Ice Demon to a dimensionless nether realm for all eternity. But with someone as powerful and malevolent as Garaka, one can never be sure of anything. Heads up! The Harbinger of the Ice Age, Powers and Abilities Now that we've done a brief run through Garaka's arc in the film, it's certain that he's among the most powerful foes the Ghostbusters have ever faced. Just by the sheer scale of what his icy powers are able to achieve, we can see that this demon isn't your everyday poltergeist. Instead, he's literally a world-ending threat. Let's take a look at his powers in order to understand this ferocious demon a bit better. 1. Cyrokinesis Garaka's control over ice is so great that one of his first acts of intimidation in the film was to freeze an entire beach. By the time Garaka was done, the sunny, sandy strip had been transformed into a polar ice cap. Not only this, but he can also fashion the ice into razor-sharp spikes that are capable of impaling multiple individuals with just a flick of Garaka's ugly fingers. The most impressive feat for us, however, was the fact that Garaka was able to turn multiple proton beams into icicles the moment they hit him when pure energy turns to ice. It's safe to say that it's pretty cold. The secret to Garaka's cyrokinesis is his ability to feed on fear itself. He used these negative emotions to lower the temperatures around him, being able to go as low as absolute zero. 2. Ghost Control As demons go, Garaka is able to exert telepathic control over any ghost, no matter how powerful. This ability can also be exercised over great distances, and no ghost has yet been able to resist the ice-spewing demon. He seems to have a trance-like effect on other ghosts. Even when contained inside the mystical lore, Garaka's ability is useless against humans, unless they are in a state of astral projection, as with the case with Phoebe, when she fell under the former's control. 3. Telepathy Garaka is also able to communicate with other ghosts like Melody with just thoughts. The extent of this ability is not known completely, but from what we have seen, distance doesn't seem to be a factor. 4. Dimensional Rift Creation Garaka uses this ability just once in the entire film, but that one glimpse is enough to convey how terrifying it really is. The ice monster is capable of opening a rift through the very fabric of reality in order to gain access to the afterlife. He can then summon as many ghosts as he wants to form his army, as all of them would surrender to his telepathic control. What's next for the Ice Demon? Though we saw Garaka tumble down to the depths of a dimensionless void in the climax of the film, we already know that the demon is a patient guy. He has already waited centuries to bring his plan to fruition, and it is likely that he will continue to do so wherever he is. We can only hope that the demon remains confined in the dimension to which he has been banished, but that is too optimistic, even for us. After all, in the world of the Ghostbusters, interdimensional travel is a very possible reality. Marvelous Verdict The latest installment in the Ghostbuster franchise seems to be doing a great job of returning the paranormal investigators to their original campy roots. Of course, Garaka's menacing presence plays a huge part in Frozen World's success. The Ice Demon was not only terrifying, but also revealed the massive scale at which these supernatural beings can affect the planet. We hope that we will never see the horned monster again, but if we do, it would certainly be exciting. Whatever happens, the Ghostbusters will definitely be there to save the world. That's it for this video, but tell us which aspect of the Frozen Empire you would like us to cover in the future. Until then, stay safe, and if something doesn't feel right, you already know whom to call. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!